Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, live from Charleston, West Virginia. It is the 2023 Men's Norsega Continental Championship. This match to close out day two features Puerto Rico, the reigning champions Puerto Rico, taking on the hosts from the United States of America. My name is Rob St. Clair. Next to me is Everett Delorme. We are Volleyball Source. Thanks for watching live on the YouTube channel. This Group B match between Puerto Rico and the United States. There we see the introduction of the starting lineups. Puerto Rico going very similar to what we saw yesterday in their loss to Cuba. Rodriguez at setter, Ellis at opposite, Lawrence and Hoyos at outside hitters, Elias and Figueroa at middles, and Albaladejo at the libero. And now the introduction of the home team, the United States of America completely cycling out seven new players tonight compared to last night. And this is the squad, Micah Christensen. Matt Anderson, Aaron Russell, TJ DeFalco, Max Holt, David Smith, and Eric Shoji will start this match for the United States. You can expect them to play about a set, set and a half at least before John Sprague might go to the bench and make some changes. Everett, your thoughts, your predictions? You're, uh, you excited? We got a little bit more energy in the house tonight. Yeah, we've got a spattering of fans coming in, so we're hoping that it continues to improve as the week uh, continues here. But yeah, I'm definitely excited. I mean, another opportunity to watch Team USA play. We were very uh, impressed by this young Puerto Rican team yesterday as well. So I'm just excited to see what this matchup brings. Um, you know, it was interesting. We were just talking to Stephen Marr, and with the two pools being un uneven as they are, we were wondering, is it better to be in the pool with more teams or less teams? You know, a team like Canada now has two days off. And talking to Stephen Marr, it, it, it sounds like they would definitely be for, prefer to still be playing right as opposed to practicing and, and playing real competition in, in the gym and so here you you team usa uh, has an opportunity to play their second game they're going to play another one tomorrow against cuba and really get their the full the full feel of the tournament over the next little bit yeah I, the more i think about it and with stephen mars feedback i kind of agree being in the pool of four might be the best thing in the united states needing to keep pace with cuba who uh, defeated Suriname three sets to none earlier today. Cuba has yet to drop a set in the tournament. The United States looking to keep that same feeling alive as we get underway here with set number one. The United States in Navy serving on the near side. Max Holt, number 12 in blue, will get us underway. And Kristen right Lawrence. Lawrence is going to be a big serving target for this American team. And look at that block. David Smith. David Landy. David Landy. <laughs> just, just making it happen right off the bat there with a big block. And you know what? You have to think that every serve here is going to Clistan Lawrence. And they're going to make him feel uncomfortable all day long. But this is the development that he needs to move to the left side. I talked to John Sparrow before the match and can confirm that exact thing. They are looking heavily at number two in white there. He just passed that ball as a reception target. Scramble play here on the Puerto Rico side. Some miscommunication there. Lawrence initiates the recycle. And now a free ball here for the United States. Pipe oh, combination, Aaron Russell. Russell came all the way around and swung around from one there, and it was just absolutely beautiful. And already you can tell the difference in demeanor between last night and tonight for Puerto Rico. Yesterday versus Puerto Rico versus Cuba, they came in nice and comfortable tonight. They're feeling the pressure a little bit more. There's a lot of pressure to feel. Two good serves already by Max Holt. And he misses that one out of bounds. Puerto Rico is on the board. So Puerto Rico starting with Kevin Rodriguez at setter number six. Back to serve here. We were really impressed by this guy yesterday. Yeah. Little guy, 1 meter 81. Even that, we uh, that's 5'11". That's we think that's generous yeah. at 29 years of age. But he made some really fun plays on offense. He absolutely did. He runs a fantastic offense, delivers the ball well, and serves decent as well. Matt Anderson, who gets the start at opposite, rockets the ball cross court on the right side. Yeah, he must be feeling pretty fresh. Didn't even touch the floor yesterday. So now it's time to work out those cobwebs as we look towards the bigger matches and the playoffs later on this weekend. And an interesting point here I just now noticed. Uh, Tim McIntosh is on the floor right now at Libero. United States using both Liberos. Shoji when receiving, McIntosh when serving. Good pressure there from Anderson. Delayed oh. swing there, and well read by Russell. He watches it go out of bounds. That was that looked pretty close. That did look pretty close. So Matt Anderson will continue to serve. Obviously one of the best players of a generation, really. I've seen him play two different positions, been the starting opposite now for about eight, maybe nine years 
on the right side for the United States. That is a rocket from the service line. Big misconnection there on offense for Puerto Rico. Oh, Micah oh, oh. Christensen to Smith. And uh, good luck stopping all that misdirection. Yeah, come on now. Micah getting playing some games there. It almost looks like he faked out Smith, too, as uh, David wasn't quite re ready there. But So I've actually seen David Smith practice that. He runs at his, his approach way too early, then completely stops, then jumps as, as a means of faking out the blocker. That serve just, just out long. of bounds long by Anderson. So Eric Shoji in now, number 22 in white and red on the near side. Uh, in the words of his head coach, John Spira, the best serve receiver in the world. Those are, that's, those are some, that's some high praise right it there. It is. Spira's not a guy to like throw out superlatives like that. You know what, best serve receiver in the world, but still couldn't beat his coach wow. at Zaxa, Thomas Swovo, in a passing competition. But that swing there from DeFalco was, was heavy. That That's was a heavy. little disgusting. And on the give and go, I mean, we, we got to hang out with Team USA in Ottawa, watch some of their games, record some of their games, get some, some really good social media clips. We've seen TJ DeFalco explode balls this summer. Yep, one of the hardest hit bounces I've ever seen in a match. Nice touch by Christensen mm -hmm. there. Great looking transition to Falco right on cue that across his body out of the back row. In in my uh, in, I thought that the pipe wasn't a settable ball there. He was <laughs> sitting at the attack line and he almost ran that like a middle set off of his right shoulder. So fast, the set never got above the height of the antenna. Seven to two, great start for the United States, and that one is wide barely. You saw Aaron Russell pointing down like that ball was in. Important to point out, like we have every match, no challenge system this week at the Norseka Championship. So uh, we've got four line judges. We've got an up and a down official. If those six don't spot something, then it didn't happen. Really nice pressure there from the middle blocker, Antonio Elias. And Anderson straight over the top of the block and on the baseline. Good luck stopping that. Not much Puerto Rico can do in that scenario. And I, unfortunately, I think we might be in for another night like we had last night as the dong days of Norseka continue <laughs> here on day number two. But it, at this point, when the Team USA is playing like this, if you're a team like Puerto Rico, it doesn't really matter what you're doing. It's all about what USA is doing. Absolutely. Pretty good pass there by Kliston Lawrence. And a beautiful okay. fastball to the outside. Omar Hoyos, the captain who's still an NCAA University player at George Mason here in the States. Yeah, I mean, that was the first big swing we've seen from Hoyos in this tournament. He was a little quiet yesterday, so I'm loving to see how aggressive he is coming out of the bat here. That ball was punched. Here is Jamal Ellis, number 16, the brand new opposite, 19 years old for Puerto Rico. What a pass by Eric Shoji. That is best receiver in the world type of stuff. Diving to his right, right on Christensen's head, and Max Holt puts it away. I just thought about a, a, a fun piece of merch, a t-shirt, like John Spraw called me the best serve receiver in the world, and all I got was this stupid t-shirt. <laughs> I love it. We'll have to give it to Eric. Eric is a friend of the channel. I sort of missed out of bounds there by Micah Christensen. Uh, we've got we've got a little bit of taste of service error in my mouth right about now, Everett. Canada, who pretty easily won their match over Mexico earlier, even doing so, they missed a lot of serves. They did, they did miss a lot of serves. You're not wrong, Rob. So let's see if USA can not pull off a, a, an Olympic level disaster here and keep wow. the ball into the court. Well, well, Matt Anderson. That disgusting. ball was into the court. Perfect pass by Shoji again. And here's a real luxury. The United States have had this ever since Anderson switched to the opposite position. Rotation one, when he hits on the left, great, easy. He plays outside hitter professionally. No problem for him there. Pretty good pass by Lawrence again. There and look go. at Kevin Rodriguez. Holt can't believe that that wasn't a reaching over the net call, but in my opinion, if you want that call, you got to go up and get that ball. Yeah. Rodriguez is a front row setter. Had Holt gone up and provided some type of block there, he would have gotten that call. Totally agree. Here is Han Loar Figueroa, 17 years of age, number 21 in white at the middle blocker spot for Puerto Rico. What a prospect. Wow, what a great run. Fantastic run there by Team USA. And they're... They're nine for nine so far offensively. <laughs> They're nine for nine right now. 
They have yet to be dug. So last night when the United States beat Suriname with a different roster, it was Micah Ma'a at the helm of that team. They, s they had one of the most offensively efficient performances I've ever seen, and Christensen apparently took that as a challenge for tonight. A serve, Max oh, Holt, oh, oh, oh. right yeah. off the shoulder. Ah, oh, that's another tough one out here as... So that's uh, Fernand Albaladejo, number 20 in red on the far side at Libera for Puerto Rico. He's getting tagged in the shoulder there. And legendary Puerto Rican player, now turned head coach, Ozzy Antonetti, needs timeout. 12-6. So, this is about what we expected so far. Just a, yes. a, a juggernaut offensively from the United States with a little bit of service pressure uh, to back it up. Yeah, absolutely. Three service errors, which is really the only thing, the only blemish right now on Team USA. As we mentioned, nine for nine offense. <laughs> oh, that's man. that's that's pretty gross as it is. It's nine for nine for nine. Just picking up where they left off yesterday with an entire new roster. Entirely new nine, roster. Entire new squad. The benefit of depth as we're talking about not only this tournament, which is a lot of matches in just a six day event, but also looking forward to the Olympic qualification tournaments where the, where all these teams will at least the United States, Canada, Cuba, and Mexico will play seven matches in nine days. You need depth to succeed in those tournaments. Nice touch there, and Holt makes the defensive play. Now DeFalco for the score. Inside three blockers cross court, and the perfect offensive start continues. Ten for ten. You know, if I was Ozzy Antonetti right now on the Puerto Rico sideline, I'd be hyping up Clistan Lawrence so much right now because that shot is exactly what you want to see from him on the left side. High, hard, off the block. The USA did a great job to keep it in play, but that's what you want to see. Nice change-up serve there from Max Holt. Ellis out of the back row is dug off the tape. Transition chance to Anderson. Oh. Very nice wrist-away change-up at the last moment off the outside arm of Lawrence and out of here. The perfect offense continues. I almost thought that about about the day. Ah. My You're Spanish is there. not good. Al Baladejo. Al Baladejo. There we go. I just needed to hear it one time from you to be able to pronounce it. <laughs> I thought he might get that I ball. I thought he might get it. Look at there. That's Cody Kessel, the 15th man on the roster this week, getting some Instagram content down by your camera, Everett. Hey, look at that ball. That's punched down the line there by Clinton Lawrence. So far, I think on the left side, we've only seen him Bounce score <laughs> that, that cross-body shot down the line. I think that's the only time we've seen him score so far on the left side. Well, Puerto Rican volleyball historically has always run super duper fast You're on offense. Wrong. And Kevin Rodriguez is the perfect guy to set an offense like that. We've already seen some wide open lines for both Puerto Rican outside hitters. David oh, Smith. Oh, oh, oh. So, Everett, why do we call him David Lamby? And why is that the highest compliment we can, we can give a middle blocker? Well, because the best middle blocker in the world and possibly ever is Robert Landy Simone. Um, but when you start playing and start taking over games from the baseline, blocking and attacking the way that Robert Landy does, then we, we give you the Landy moniker. And, I mean, Rob, you remember, wow. oh my goodness, Matt Anderson, that was <laughs> the The curve on that ball was this is why disgusting. That's why we film from the baseline, boys and girls. But this, anyway. That's exactly why we're filming from the baseline. But, Rob, you and I, back looking back to the 2021 Champions League, Dave, like, David Smith was getting subbed out. And we thought, you know, he's getting a little bit older. He might be ready to retire. He's only no. gotten better since then. Yeah. Champions League MVP winning three CEV Champions Leagues in a row, which is an all-time achievement. Micah Christensen claims that he did not touch that ball. Or maybe that he did not touch it last. I thought for sure that Hoyos got Christensen's fingertips on its way out of bounds. I think this is a good call. Right now it looks like David Smith is is asking for him landing into the net. So it's mm, Okay. Okay. We'll have to see. Kliston Lawrence from the service line and the one area where Puerto Rico was able to create some break points last night against Cuba was in this rotation. Good ball there from DeFalco. Ooh, tipped over the top oh. from Anderson. That ball's down. No, uh, we're still to playing. the line judge, but we'll play on. Ah, there it is. There's Micah Christensen. A little bit of attitude there with a, the shake of his hand. I thought uh, so. That that officially breaks up the United that was, States. That was the first, offense. the first Doug ball there and by the USA. Doug in air quotes because yeah. I thought that ball was down. Here goes DeFalco. Wow. Oh, wow. 
TJ DeFalco. Wow. That's just that's an absolute rocket. Now, Bring in the heat. The, we don't have a speed gun here. We don't. And, may, and maybe that's a good thing because we've we've heard of some record-breaking serves coming out of Eurovolley the last couple mm -hmm. days, and it is being reported that those numbers are a bit fraudulent. It sounds like the, the speed gun is being gassed up over there. Okay. So I heard that Namir broke, broke the record, and then Wilfredo Leon took the record back. But what we also heard is that neither of those serves were actually that fast. So uh, I would like to remind everybody that we've got some people with some arms over here on this half of the world as well. I mean, some of the best arms. Absolutely. Get Miguel Lopez over here and TJ DeFalco. Like, oh, what a reaction by DeFalco. Oh. <laughs> that is crazy how good that is. I love it, too, that they ran the drift play, even though it wasn't necessary. Even though the blocker had gone up with the setter, they still ran it. And with like how difficult that ball was to pass, like the fact that DeFalco mm -hmm. passed a perfect ball there off as as much speed as the tape took off of that is crazy. And then yeah, just a perfect route. It's it's so difficult to put this American team under pressure. It is. They really are difficult. very comfortable in a lot of situations. You have to really bring it to them. Like it has to be a Poland in the VNL finals type situation where you're just overpowering them because they have it systematically and athletically. That passes way up into the rafters. Nice oh, block oh, by oh, Christensen, oh. but good coverage. Hoyos again just dumps it over. Anderson is all over that. Holton transition. What a run again. And you know what? It seems like Canada was really forcing the pipe in the last match, and this one it seems like the USA is really forcing the middle. I love they're it. They're really playing with those middle blockers, and so far they're 14 for 15 in attacking. <laughs> Actually, I think that's 15, 15 for 60. Oh, no, we're at, we're, at, we're at 20 to 9 here. Unbelievable. And if you look at the numbers, five points for Anderson, four for DeFalco, four for Smith, three for Holt. Um, Russell is the only one out there not getting much many Yeah, looks, he got that one big ball earlier. I mean, they, I th what have we set? Like maybe two outside balls the whole match so far? Yeah. Been middle of the court. And Anderson, and that's like John Spira and Team USA have really always preached that. They want a certain percentage of their offense to be run down the center of the court. That's front court middle and the back court pipe. And uh, Micah Christensen is executing that at a very high level right now. Especially when you're playing a, a, against a team like this, you really just you really want to make things really narrow down the court because as soon as you start opening things up, you're just going to be creating so many gaps for your outside hitters. Especially when so there's a great chance that I think the United States will go to the bench later on in this match. Yep. That'll that'll keep the Puerto Rican block even more on edge. And a coach's point there for Ozzy Antonetti. Dave Smith misses the serve short. So uh, Puerto Rico approaching this tournament. I mean, their approach here is pretty clear given their average age. They've got a 17 year, two 17-year-olds, two 19-year-olds, three 20-year-olds, and two 21-year-olds on this roster getting them some experience uh, against one of the very best teams in the world. Including that there, the serve from Jamal Ellis, the new opposite. Now, Christensen heading back to serve. Look at Cody Kessel down there. He's getting the angles. <laughs> Cody's been the big cheerleader this week. Wow, oh, oh, oh. that is a shot from Jamal Ellis and Everett you had the feedback yesterday Ellis being so young that when he waits and then accelerates to the ball once it is set instead of being too early he can create some pretty gnarly angles with his physicality yeah he's got a good shoulder he's got long arms if you just look at him over there his arms are dangling down by his knees so he has that ability to create the angles but when he's early it's just not working out as that ball goes wide and out of out of bounds USA currently doubled up on Puerto Rico here is Aaron Russell, who uh, we just learned pretty recently is going to be a dad pretty soon. So oh. congratulations to him and his wife. Congratulations, Fat Ron. Fat Ron. That ball is barely out of bounds. And Everett, this, earlier this summer when we were in Ottawa, it was such a treat to see Aaron Russell back. It was it the first was. time I'd seen him in person in a while. Remember, he missed the Tokyo Olympics with hip surgery mm -hmm. and came back last year and kind of reminded the world how good Aaron Russell is. Absolutely. And, you know, it, him and Thomas Jaski are two guys who have battled injuries recently and have come back with a force. That is a shot by Matt Anderson that makes the game look very, very easy. I almost wonder if there's a rule that you can't wear two leg sleeves on Team USA. <laughs> it's either one or nothing. 
Yeah. That, wow, that, I just noticed that. Like Smith's even got one. Sm Holt's got one. DeFalco's got one. Nobody's got two. Russell's got one as well. Russell's got one. I'm a fan of the leg sleeve, by the way, but I just wear both of them. Why not? Oh, JSK over there has only got one as well. Oh, good touch there by... Aaron Russell as that one knocks over a few coffees over on the media desk. That is a really good first ball side out from Puerto Rico. A it perfect is. pass from Clinton Lawrence off a tough serve that they're able to run the middle on. We knew that the United States was going to go after Lawrence, and I think he's hung in there pretty well so far. He has a little bit. Uh, his one kill on the night hasn't been reflected in the stat sheet, so that's that's a little too bad for him. Oh, that's a great serve by Beautiful Rodriguez. Beautiful really though by around. Shoji, and now a one-on-one -on -one oh. put away by Anderson. That's exactly what I mean. It is so hard to put the United States under pressure. That was a good serve, like you said, and Shoji made it look easy. He did make it look easy. But that's why he's the best serve receiver in the world. I'm calling it right here. According Matt, to John Spraw. Matt Anderson ace to win the set. Base spin to win? I'm going uh, at Clinton Lawrence to position one. I think it's going to be a sky ball. <laughs> Wow. Pretty well handled. Big ball oh. to Hoyos, and he goes through the block and down. I'm, I'm, Hoyos is really showing up today, and I'm really enjoying that for Puerto Rico. He's really come, come here to ball, and I just think maybe yesterday wasn't his day as Ellis and Elias were really, were really showing up for the team. So it's been really nice to see Hoyos come out with aggression. Hoyos, by the way, still playing university ball at George Mason in Virginia, which is not that far from here. This is about as close to a home game for him as you could get. Oh, my goodness. Oh, oh, my goodness. We recognize that play, Rob. Yeah, we've seen that one. That, that one's got a couple million views here on the YouTube channel and YouTube shorts for him. TJ DeFalco wow. explodes down the line to end set number one in style. My goodness. Uh, it's just he just does disgusting <laughs> things, does TJ DeFalco. That's absolutely gross. One of the most highly rated prospects in American history, and he has lived up to it. You know, Rob, funnily enough, the first time I ever saw TJ DeFalco live, I wasn't impressed. Is that true? Yeah, he was playing for Long Beach State University. They're up in Canada uh, for, for our Canadian Thanksgiving, and they were playing against the McMaster Marauders. Um, and it was ended, ended up being a win for McMaster. There was a period of time, about three years, that the precursor to winning the NCAA championship was coming up to Canada and get your, your, your butt handed to you by the McMaster Marauders. I do remember Marauders, that. Uh, twice with Long Beach and then once with Ohio State as well. <laughs> um, but I was just watching him play, and I'll bet this was October. Very out of season for NCAA teams, and I just thought he was a little lackadaisical, and maybe, you know, just one he wasn't that into it. And then I got to see him at the 2019 uh, Norseka Championships, and I immediately changed my, my idea on that. Yeah, DeFalco is a star. He's an absolute star and actually the youngest player in sort of the regular rotation for the U.S., other than maybe Jeff Jendrick. But which, which says a lot. It does. Right, the youngest guy. Actually, Tim McIntosh is technically the youngest player here uh, for Team USA. And him and Jay Kane's both at 25 years uh, twenty-five years old. But you're right, 26 years old for um, DeFalco and, uh, and Jendrick. And that's why the USA is actually one of the oldest teams we have in the world. Yes, the they moment. are. So, uh, first set in the books, by the way. Uh, I'm Rob St. Clair. That's Evan Delorme. Yes, I see the camera is a tiny bit out of focus. It did get bonked by a it ball did, a minute it did ago. Get bonked, yes. So, we will get that fixed. But All the better, because we're not much to look at. We are not. You, we we have, are not. We're definitely got faces for radio <laughs> over here. Uh, maybe we shouldn't have uh, a live stream podcast like we do. But <laughs> Well, uh, the people are tuning in, so they get to see our faces and hear our voices. Uh, we're happy that you guys are tuning in. We can see your comments in the YouTube live chat. Uh, Get active, ask us some questions, let us know who you're rooting for, where you're watching from. There's a question about using two liberos. Yes, you can do that in any FIVB event. Uh, we saw Suriname do it. We saw, who else has done that? We saw Cuba do it a bit, where mm -hmm. they'll put one libero in when receiving and the other libero in when serving. So, uh, yeah, you, you can do that in an unlimited way, uh, as in, in and out as often as you want. You can use both liberos. And I actually kind of like using Shoji for reception and McIntosh for defense. Absolutely. Tim McIntosh is an insane defender. We saw him scramble yesterday. We saw him get down, make big digs. Loved his energy on the floor. And we had a nice little chat with him afterwards, so you can check that out over on our YouTube channel as we pulled that that clip specifically out yes, for you guys did. to check out. So uh, set number two about ready to go. Uh, see if Puerto Rico has any answers. See, and I'm already looking over the United States side. Thomas Jeschke and Jake Haynes are on the court right now. Well, now Jeschke's walking back to the bench. But it looks like Matt Anderson's night is over. Uh, okay. John Sparrow actually implied to me earlier that he might do that. He might give Matty just a set. 
All right. Just, and here we go. Uh, just enough to get the 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 Weeses the Weeses greased. The, <laughs> the, the wheels greased. That was great. You know, get them lubed up a little bit so he can get ready for the next couple of days. So set number two, ready to go. Puerto Rico in white on the near side with setter Kevin Rodriguez serving to get us underway. Aaron Russell's underneath that one. Oh. Wow, look at that set by Christensen. Mm, I, I absolutely love that. Oh, I remember there was a really good podcast that Ryan Millar, former American Olympic gold medalist, did with Shout Micah out. Christensen a couple years ago where Micah was talking about the really minute details of how he was trying to change up the way that he back sets the ball. I'm like, Man, the, the way that he thinks about the game, the reason why he's got a great case to be the best setter in the world. And a uh, perfect first swing by Jake Haynes as well, but not a good first serve. Big number nine in dark blue, Jake Haynes out of Ohio State by way of Chicago. Two meters and ten on the roster. I swear to you guys, he's bigger, he's bigger than, than that. that. He's bigger than that. The best was that video of uh, the guys on the plane, of Jake Haynes <laughs> on the plane, on the way over here. <laughs> he does not fit in a plane. No. Not a little one going to Charleston. Oh, I honestly, like that was a, a Steph Curry celebration where I was celebrating before that ball was hit. Because you already knew. Yeah. You already knew. Sometimes when you're that good, when, once you release it, you know it's going in. When, when Micah set that ball and the Puerto Rican blockers jumped on David Smith, you knew that Russell was scoring and there was nothing they could do about it. Ooh, I like the idea of the chop serve from DeFalco, but both Puerto Rican's points so far by way of American service errors. We have seen Mark Pavlik. He was here yesterday. We did chat with him. I saw him today briefly. Uh, I hear there's going to be a Penn State crowd coming from Happy Valley later on this weekend. Yeah, so if you do remember, if you guys were following us during the uh, first point competition, we did a nice sit-down with Mark Pavlik then. Mark is an incredible personality, great on a microphone. Wow. <laughs> oh, I love that. Penn State Nitt not Nittany Lion right there. Aaron Russell bangs one down the line. It, uh. How ridiculous is it that like in the starting lineup with Russell, DeFalco, and Anderson, Russell might be the third option. <laughs> he, but he, but also sometimes he can step up and be the, be the first option. Like the weapons that this American team has are insane. David Landy now back to serve. More so David, not much Landy on that one. <laughs> Uh, oh. David Landy has the Champions League MVP to his name. He does. Did that, did that dodge your camera? It did. It went right through the sticks. Amazing. Great news. Uh, Everett is filming, or Everett is recording baseline highlights for the classic, famous Volleyball Source baseline highlight videos. Those will be coming very soon. Oh, oh two ice in a row. Talk about a mismatch. Oh. Aaron Russell against Kevin Rodriguez one-on-one -on -one and a second straight bounce down the line. And you know what? You don't need to be one of the best setters in the world to recognize that mismatch, but I absolutely love that Micah's out there being like, hey, Aaron, we're just going to set you OT of this guy, and you're not going to get stopped. Micah working on Lawrence serving. Oh, what a set by Rodriguez. There we go. Amazing there we go. Amazing one-handed flick by the Puerto Rican setter. Clifton Lawrence comes in and gives him a push. That was awesome. Uh, Great we, extension, and Jamal Ellis ends up putting it away. We have a, a question in the chat. Do you guys know why Puerto Rico's team is not composed of more veteran players? We don't know. I think No, not really. We, I think we need to uh, talk to uh, Ozzy Antonetti about that one. Pretty good ball there by Russell. Ooh, mishandled on the Puerto Rican side. That was a chance. Now Russell on the right side. Blasted off the block of Lawrence and out of bounds. The good USA efficiency continues. 22 for 24. 22 for <laughs> That's 24. That's the most ridiculous number I've ever seen. Insane. Here goes Aaron Russell back to serve again. They do have 10 serving errors, though. That uh, is the one blemish right now. That's the one reason... Puerto Rico is still in this match. Three aces to 10 errors, make it three aces to 11 errors. We're tied up at five. Conluar Figueroa, number 21 in white, 17 years old. I'll emphasize that because it is ridiculous to be 17 and playing in this tournament. He's but been here doing he is. Good, He's been pretty good. Bouncing balls and warm yeah. up. Nice little serve there as well, too. Beautiful. Beautiful this run is, again to Russell. This is Aaron Russell's world. We're just living in it right yes, now. Yes, we are. And, uh, I'm happy to be here. I don't know about you, but I will happily uh, take my seat in Aaron Russell's world. <laughs> Holly Wong getting some love in the chat again. Holly's fantastic. Here is Max Holt. Overpass. 
David Landy. Quick ball to DeFalco. Oh, oh, oh. And uh, I respect Elias uh, tr trying to charge all the way over there to get to that lightning fast you know, outside ball. Nothing he can do, though. At that point, you just got to – I would almost let it go because that might pop a shoulder out. Oh, yeah. How you, hard DeFalco's – You get hit by that the wrong way. And what, what's so impressive about DeFalco, too, is a lot of guys generate their speed and power from their approach. Him, it's all his swing. Exactly. Strictly arm talent. Pretty good pass by Albaladejo. Wow. There we go. That's Chris San Lawrence. That's what we want to see. That's the shots he needs to be making. That's the improvements he, need, he needs to be making. That was a high-level shot. That was a world-class shot uh, right there. That is exactly right. what I was going to say. That is a world-class swing against three blockers inside of it to that angle like that at high contact point. That is, that's why he's as highly rated of a prospect as he is. What Good. a ball by Shoji again. Great First track. legit look for Puerto Rico in transition. It's off the head of Haynes and dug by Christensen. Oh, that was quick in transition. Is nice that high flat shot by DeFalco. A little bit of a tight ball. Hit that ball as hard as he could into the high part of the block. I, I think uh, Puerto Rico just doubled up on their digs uh, so far. They <laughs> yeah, got they two did. in that rally. Here is Big Jake. Served the ball pretty well last night. Oh, no. Uh, he is 0 for 2, though, tonight. Got to fix it a bit in that area. Kliston Lawrence, who very briefly, uh, I wonder, how much time did he spend at Long Beach State? Not much. Uh, then immediately went overseas to be the backup opposite at Milano, which is a big contract. It was. Nice high oh. swing by Haynes and Albaladejo diving. Couldn't quite get there. I will interject. He did, uh, after Long Beach State, which was last season, he did go back to Puerto Rico to play for his father, who was a, a coach in Puerto Rico in the professional league there, and it wasn't until this season that he went over to Milano. Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, I'm also going to put the live stats in the YouTube live chat for you all to check out throughout the match. We're looking at the same things. Easy serve there handled by Lawrence, and that ball in the middle by Elias is missed out of bounds. Uh, definite missed opportunity there off a perfect pass situation. Holly Wong comes up again within clutch and letting us know that he's been there for, he was there for three months. Holly and did spend quite a bit of time uh, working for the Long Beach men's program. I spend, she spends quite a bit of time working with the Long Beach men's program. She's there all the time. Hoyos. Smart shot down the line by Hoyos, but a good recovery from Haynes. Russell Rico. forces it over, now a three-man wall, gets a good touch. One of the best rallies of the match so far. Russell recycled again and blocked. No coverage there. That is the first negative attack from USA in this match, which is outstanding. Yeah, like, it's incredible. Which is incredible. But Puerto Rico really starting to play with I, I like the energy they're starting to bring. I think Kristen Lawrence is starting to get a little bit more uh, confidence, and they're not letting the USA bully them as much. Yeah, Puerto Rico's adjusted a little bit. Um, not quite so much in block, but definitely in defense. There are some more balls being touched, a little bit better serving, despite that one right there. Now David Smith will go back to serve. Oh, what a serve there by Smith. Pretty good pass by Hoyos, and Ellis slowed down by the block. High ball hitting practice for Aaron Russell. He oh. sends a rocket, which is dug. Oh, Ooh. no. Oh, he got it up. That he got it up. Is, oh, it didn't matter. That was a mental mistake by Micah Christensen, trying to launch it over there to Russell to maybe have a swing on the second contact, but nobody was ready for no, it. No, Russell had already backed up off the net. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say ball. it, Everett. I think Brazil kind of invented that move where when you know when Bruno would take the first ball, like in, in position two, he would just launch it to the outside to try and have a swing on two. I don't know if I've ever seen it work ever. I don't like that play. I don't think anybody should run it ever. Just run your offense. I mean, it literally worked the last game we watched. 
Wow, there we go. I don't I don't think it did. I don't know if anybody got a legit swing off of it, did they? Le Lepke set her and her got the point. Well, yeah, Lepke setting her, but it's when the setter takes the mm. first ball and tries to go to a pin right away. That's the one that I don't think ever works. 12-9 United States here. Rodriguez, the Puerto Rican setter, into the front court. And Christensen oh. floats a serve right to the baseline. And immediately Lawrence puts his hands up and takes responsibility for that one. Uh, to be fair, when that ball was contacted, I thought it was going out of bounds. I, I did too. <laughs> Definitely. Another serve there by Micah. Well handled by Lawrence, but another hitting error in the middle for Puerto Rico. That one by Figueroa, out of bounds, no touch, and now the lead is five. And looking over to Ozzy Antonetti, he will call time out here. Yeah, you have to. It, and it, it wasn't too long ago that they were just two points away at 10-8, and now all of a sudden that lead has extended to five now for the Team USA. And this is this is why they're one of the best teams in the world, because they have the ability just to clamp down and say, no, we're, we're just going to run away with this. And if you give away any points for free, mm -hmm. uh, they, they, those compound so fast when you're playing a team of the Americans' caliber. Ozzy in the chat. I agree. I think Clisson Lawrence is passing the ball pretty yes, well. Yes, absolutely. I do uh, think he's his passing is has been one of his better parts. Yeah, this game. his passing mechanics are fine. Like I, I think he definitely has the potential to be a very good serve receiver. And I agree with you, Ever. You said I think it was during the pregame show today. He can be a world class outside hitter, or he can be an opposite in Switzerland. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. And uh, I, I, this position switch is a good thing for his career, and I, I think he's gonna, really going to go places. Yeah, we had someone in the comment about that in yesterday's wow oh, exactly that's exactly it that is an international level play wow. that is an international level swing from the pipe right physically like uh, he has it on the left side he just needs to figure it out a little bit but that was fantastic there from Clifton Lawrence and so far in this set he's been playing the best we've seen him play in this tournament that ball was bombed here's the captain Omar Hoyos wonderful Puts Shoji well off the net. Haynes recycles. That might have been two contacts. Not called. And a good oh, slap there by Albaladejo. Oh. Good effort by Ellis diving into the barrier, but it's not going to be able to come back. Elias into the barriers there. We've got a, a very fun commentator problem where uh, oh, yeah, the, sorry. Puerto, the Puerto Rican opposite is Ellis, Jamal Ellis. One of the Puerto Rican middles is Antonio Elias. <laughs> and the worst is that they look they similar look, too. The guys look similar. The names look very similar. It's uh, it's tough for us over here. You uh, the, Garrett Wangatutia in, by the way, for the United States into serve for Aaron Russell. He'll play the backcourt trip at least. But honestly, he might just stay in the rest of the match. I wouldn't be that surprised. Good Ooh. run there by Rodriguez, but big, great pickup by McIntosh. Oh, TJ DeFalco Show him flexes the gun. on him. Show him the gun as DeFalco goes one against two, pushes that ball through, and I absolutely love how he pushed that ball through, came down and grabbed it and walked <laughs> away with it. That's that's a big boss. It's move like right when there. you dunk a basketball and catch it on the way down. That's like that's pretty cool. Here is Garrett once again, the veteran out of UCLA. Goes at Lawrence. I like that service choice. Three-man block for the okay. United States, and Lawrence goes through it. Kristen Lawrence starting to pick it up, and I, I, I want to address something. Someone yesterday said it was crazy to say that he's not going to be a professional playing on the right side. He just won't be playing in Italy. Right. Right? Like, right. he has the talent and the ability to play amongst the best in the world. Absolutely no doubt about it. Just not on the right side of the court. I agree. I like that float serve there from Figueroa. Haynes thrown into the block, and Elias closing yeah. just a little bit late, redif uh, redirects it out of bounds, 17-11. Yeah. And, I mean, the reality is, is that if you can't play in Italy or Poland, then you might as well not play. That's what I, why I stopped <laughs> playing volleyball, you know. Like, I was just like, <sighs> they only want me in Germany. I don't know if I. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> we, uh, we are going to play a little bit of short court ever, you and I, later on oh, this tournament, which 100%. I'm looking forward to. That ball. Uh, do we call that one a phaser from Max Holt? Is that the I Canadian did, term for I, it? I did not see it, so I cannot say it. It was spinning, like, sideways and with a bit of backspin. I mean, the truest of the spatches is when it has no spin yeah, at all. And, and that one wasn't that. 
Uh, Holly, great point in the chat. Gabby Garcia Fernandez, former Puerto Rican opposite, will be eligible to play for Team USA in March of next year. Yeah, they won this tournament two years ago on his back as that was a fantastic move by Team USA on the three-man block. David Smith anchoring it, and that is not a bad swing at all by Jamal Ellis. He kept that ball high, and just a high deflection from the block and too good of a play from the United States. 18-12 for Jake Haynes. Pretty good pass by Hoyos. Ellis is slowed down. Great looking transition here. Quick ball to DeFalco. And there's the chest dig. Chest we were dig. talking about it. And there goes Ellis. The second swing on the left side is a good one. Chest dig. Chest dig. Give me more <laughs> chest digs. I like a chest dig. Uh, someone's asking about the tournament format. We will talk about that either the next time out or in between sets. So we will answer that question for you. Floor cleanup over there. Kliston Lawrence back to serve. How old is Lawrence? He's only 20. My oh, goodness. Oh, he's, he's, a, he's a baby. One meter 96. And that's the thing is that, like, 196 is a, is a very good-sized international outside hitter. But at the opposite spot, it's just not, like, what the best leagues in the world are looking for. Uh, that serve is also not what the best leagues in the world are looking for. Yeah, no, at 6'5", you need to be like a Gregor Grosher type, you know, uh, where you're just mashing balls so hard that no one can stop you. Yeah, Lawrence is like, he's a wiry kid. His arm is fast, but he doesn't like pop the ball the way that international opposites do, or like DeFalco there, for example. Another uh, serve coming up short. <laughs> Look at Antonio Elias's left hand. He's got some serious Ooh. tape on that thing. A uh, common middle blocker problem. We've all had our fingers broken. We've played we that all position. have, absolutely. Don't want to serve that man. No, oh, not. look at that drift route from David Smith jumping 90 degrees sideways to bounce that ball cross body. That was all just pure perfection, and that's what we're getting from the Team USA at the moment. Just He's pure perfection. Man, I, the sophistication of middle attack routes these days is so much fun to watch. And, and I think USA does that the best as well. They do it with all their players, too. Some teams only have one or two middles that oh, can do it, and there's Max Holtz. Back after a year off of volleyball, back to Team USA, and at, I think 36 years of age. Yes, 36 years of age, Max Holt. Looking like... Back to his form in like 20, the 2016 Olympic quad when he really was one of the best middle blockers in the world. Yeah, absolutely. And it, I'm surprised why, about how effective Max Holt has been in his return. Agreed. I was not expecting him to be as dynamic, as explosive, and frankly as good as he's been since returning from injury. It's been excellent. So uh, while we do have a minute, let's tell people about the format. We've got a group of three and a group of four in this seven-team tournament. Uh, group A is the three-team group. That's Canada, Mexico, and the Dominican Republic. And we learned earlier today with Canada going 2-0 that they will win that group. They are off straight to the semifinals. So it will be a six-team bracket. The fourth-place team from this pool here, uh, Group B, USA, Puerto Rico, Suriname, and Cuba. Fourth-place team there goes to the classification rounds. But... If you finish second or third in your pool, you will play a quarterfinal on Friday. If you win your pool, you go straight to the semifinals on Saturday. How is David Smith keeping up so well at his age? Honestly, I don't know. It has to be, <laughs> he has to be keeping up with his body at a LeBron level. You know, every day in the gym, every day working out, every day managing his little things because his progression over the past couple of years has been phenomenal. It is like important what, to 34, 35? He's 38. <laughs> oh my goodness. It is also important to point out that Dave Smith was born with almost complete hearing loss. He plays volleyball and just in everyday life in extremely high powered hearing aids. Just another thing that's gotten in his way. Well, hasn't really gotten in his way to being an elite volleyball player. Ooh, plays. thought we might have an option there play from TJ, but Garrett Mwangatutia, who's still in, recycles. We also have Jeff Jendrick in the match, and he oh. gets involved in the offense. And just you could see where the blockers and Jendrick all landed. It was a Jendrick sa sandwich, him in the middle with the two <laughs> Puerto Ricans on the outside, and he was hitting, just laying down that mustard in the gap. So sure enough, John Sparra is slowly but surely going to his bench. 
And uh, it is a very good bench at that, as we've talked about. Jake Haynes is in. Garrett Mongatutia is in. Jeff Jendrick is in. Dave Smith will go to the sideline now after that service error. Are we going to see a Micah Ma'a? I, I would don't, love that. I don't think we're going to see Taylor Avril because he did inform me before the game that he ate way too many PB and J's <laughs> and will not be and, and didn't think he could play. Taylor Averill is an uh, absolute beauty. Oh, I literally I have a clip of him saying it. We're gonna be posting on Instagram in a little bit. <laughs> That's fantastic news. <laughs> okay, Garrett. Look at, that four, look at that four to four shot. Oh Indonesia had a lot to deal with this year <laughs> with, with Garrett playing there. Garrett has played in some uh, some creative places all over the world. Let's put it that way. David Smith is arguably in his prime now. And he is aging backwards. I couldn't agree more. Another good pass from Lawrence. Okay. Hoyos goes well there against the big block of Jake Haynes. There's flashes of really, really good volleyball here from Puerto Rico, especially in the first ball side out game. I think their offense can hang with teams in this tournament. It's just how are they going to score points on their serve? They don't have the bangers from the service line. They don't have the blocking ability yet. And here we have a set, uh, what is this? This might be a little delayed 6-2 situation or just a blocking sub. Lorenzo Rivera, another 17-year-old, number four in white, into the front court for Rodriguez. Probably just to block. Yeah, just to block. It's Hoyos. It's the left side at the serve right now, so wouldn't be delayed 6-2. Oh, two a and oh. A m rare miscommunication there between Garrett and Shoji, and they both walk off, cool off steam, and, and let it go. But got a shout out. We got out of system in the chat for the first ah. time. There we go. Of course, they're commenting on the too many PB and Js. <laughs> I'm sure that has to be in a vlog somewhere with Gage just mucking a bunch of PB and Js and having a cramp before game. Shouts to Gage, Joe, Faye. Love that crew. That ball served out of bounds by Hoyos, and that will be set point United States. Rodriguez will come back in to set for Puerto Rico, and Garrett Wangatutia will have the spin to win honors this time. Um, Anna Gondarez. Gondarez coming in and saying that Garrett, the only one rocking two leg sleeves. Oh, yeah, or the he's full got two pants. leggings. When you're old, you got to keep the knees warm, you know. Okay. Oh, what a pass by Albaladejo. Bick run. What a bomb by Hoyos out of the back row. Hoyos has really impressed me today. I thought if, if I was a little disappointed of anyone on the Puerto Rican side in yesterday's game, it was him. He was just quiet, not really around. But he's leading them in scoring a bit only with five points. But it's been a tough it's been a tough evening for Puerto Rico <laughs> now as it's set point once again for Team USA. Christensen oh. to Jendrick for the sad. And the American middle blocker back one route that has destroyed people for decades is alive and well. Jendrick bounces that one to the attack line, and the United States takes a 2-0 lead at 25-18 in the second. I guess we got to talk more about PB&Js now if he's going to get <laughs> to out of system hey, in the chat. Hey, uh, I, I, that has to be Gage. Hey, Gage, uh, what are your thoughts on Uncrustables? They're my go-to Wapaka oh. snack. I'm a huge fan. I uh, just want to get your thoughts, so let us know in the YouTube live chat. We just got them in Canada. Like, literally this summer was the first time we were able Is to. Is that true? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, my God, Uncrustables have been around for decades. What's up, people? Our camera is in focus. Oh, oh, there we go. Welcome back behind the broadcast booth. I am Rob St. Clair. This is Everett DeLorme. Uh, our, we are very good friends from uh, different countries. The what, what, what parallel is that that separates us? The 69th? Is it actually? No, it's the 49th. <laughs> <laughs> that was, mm, sorry, that, that, was, was, that was just me. <laughs> Everett, Everett representing Toronto and the greater Ontario community. I'm representing Chicago and the greater Midwest volleyball community. Uh, we have some good banter. We uh, we have a podcast called the Nine by Nine that we do every week. You can get uh, get some merch here if you like the show. Uh, we have got a whole lot of coverage at the Spicy Volleyball logo. Beautiful. I think I've got it on my laptop here as well. I oh yeah, there it too. is. Uh, we've got a whole lot of coverage from this tournament. You've obviously you're here watching the matches. We've got we've we've done pregame shows both days so far. We did a good podcast yesterday morning from our house in Charleston where we talked about all the volleyball going on in the rest of the world, including uh, men's Euro Volley, where pool play finished up today. So uh, a lot going on there. We've got interviews, including the ones we're doing on the broadcast. We're clipping them out, putting them up as uh, separate videos. Like, we'd like to be doing even more of those, and we will over the weekend. Yeah. Also on Instagram, my Instagram, which is on the screen, Volleyball Source Instagram, which is on the screen. The second edition. <laughs> <laughs> this is We are on the second version of both the yes, YouTube are. and of the Instagram. Uh, one of them, YouTube, we can thank Amazon for that uh. one. Big shout out. Uh, and then our good friends at Volleyball World did take down the Instagram for 
posting highlights from the 2021 20, no, yeah, 2021 Nations League. So uh, we've had we've we've had an interesting journey here at Volleyball Source. Everett, in particular, has kind of been with it from the beginning. But we are honored to be doing this broadcast. Oh, it's been so much fun. It's it's fun fun to hang out with you. It, it's we, fun to hang out is, with you too. We, we we literally talk all week long. We do a podcast of each other every week, but we live a good eight hours drive away from each other and only see. This is what like the fourth time we've hung out in person ever. Yeah, yeah. VNL Ottawa. Um, Austin. Uh, Austin for VNL first point. Again. VNL again in Ottawa and then finally here. So it's fantastic, but even more so. Big shout out to the USAV for allowing us to come and, and giving us the rights to, to streaming this event exclusively. It's It's been a lot of fun, and it's only day two. It's only day o two? Only day two. You and have to put uh, up with us for four more days. <laughs> the other thing, as we switch back to the baseline camera angle, we will be shooting this entire tournament from the baseline. It as is it the be. best way to watch volleyball. Yeah. And if you're not used to it yet, that's okay. By the end of this tournament, you will be, and you will be on board with us. Uh, it is the best angle to watch volleyball from. And as TJ DeFalco goes back to serve here, you can see from this camera view how far left to right or right to left his mm -hmm. serve moves. You can see the lateral aspect of the game so much better from this angle. That one didn't move left or right at all. And that ball is thrown in the middle, actually long. The United States on the board first. And Everett, sure enough, Taylor Averill, extra LBs full of PB&J and, and all, starts this set. He's in the front court. I mean, he's had some time to work them off on the sidelines now. So <laughs> here is DeFalco again. That ball missed out of bounds. So the American starting lineup here, Taylor Averill in, in the middle. Christensen still at setter. DeFalco still at outside hitter. Mwanga Tutia and Haynes also start. Uh, the other middle blocker will be Jeff Jendrick when he comes back in. Uh, same starting lineup for Puerto Rico. Kevin Rodriguez, the setter, back to serve here. A little shorty. Averill handles the first contact and available in transition, but the tape slows him down and he gets dug. Now Lawrence oh. lights up on the Tutia and a oh, dig kill. No. you got to be kidding me. Oh, and you know what? Hoyos goes over and just daps up Lawrence oh. because he did everything right there. That was a fantastic swing by Clifton Lawrence. No and way. You know what? Sometimes you got to be good to get lucky. And that's exactly <laughs> happened for Garrett Mangutia there. Off the neck, shoulder, head, not entirely sure of what, but it lands on the other side. That was an incredible swing by Clifton Lawrence. <laughs> and, oh, man. Mangutia, right place, right time. That is a highlight. Check that on Instagram later. Great chuck there Lawrence. by Rodriguez. And Lawrence oh. uh, killing him with kindness. Doesn't want to get dug and, and it doesn't want to give up any more dig kills. So he hits a pretty nice roll shot. And you know what? This is why, once again, going back to the Clifton Lawrence conversation, we think he's so world class. That's such a nice touch there. Yeah. That is, that's a Stephen Marshall level of roll shot from the right oh. side. You know, you know. If sure you do. know, if you know, you know. Oh, shout out to Steve Marshall. Here is Lawrence back to serve. Oh, that is very close. That was real close. If this was an FIVB event, they'd be throwing up the C. But uh, not here. No yeah. challenge. Uh, the line judge there on the baseline called it out of bounds. No, not a lot of complaining on the Puerto Rico side on that call or just in general. This has been a quiet match in terms of spice directed at the referees. Different from the Mexico match earlier. Oh, that is a really oh. fast ball and a really nice piece of improvisation by Hoyos. George Mason has a real nice gem over there. And I know that they've been a, they've been a team in the EVA, correct? Yeah, they're in the George EVA. George Mason, yeah. yeah that, that, that's consistently really good team in the EIVA. Consistently, consistently good. Oh, it's the EIVA. We don't call it the EVA. <laughs> I remember. Yeah, I, Pav was very clear about that one. Yes, I, I, I'm, uh, <laughs> Sir Pav, I apologize wherever you are. I'm pretty sure you're here. He's um, here somewhere. But, yeah, good, good, great player there from the EIVA. I was disappointed when we didn't get to go to uh, NCAA championships this year. Hopefully next year. Uh, service error there. United States takes a 4-3 to three lead. We've got a, a lot of the country in, in terms of NCAA represented on both teams. I'll, of course, there's the classic Penn State Nittany Lions and Aaron Russell, Max Holt, Matt Anderson. We've got Jake Haynes out of Ohio State, Micah Christensen, USC, TJ DeFalco, Long Beach, Jeff Jendrick, and Thomas Jeske, Loyola, Chicago. Tim McIntosh out of Sacred Heart. Uh, a little bit more of an obscure one, but a great player we talked to last night. You got Shoji and Justin Louie representing Stanford. Stanford. Right, we got Stanford represented on Team Canada. We got Mason, George Mason represented with Hoyos 
here for Puerto Rico. And I'm not sure if he's on the team, but there's also a member of the Charleston men's team that has played previously for Dominican's national team. Oh, is that true? Okay. Yes. Shoutouts to the University of Charleston, by the way. There is an NCAA men's program here in the backyard of this tournament. They were all in the building here on Monday night. Some of them are in and out helping us run cameras and do some stuff, and it's just good to interface with that program and head coach Luke Reynolds. That's a nice swing by the 17-year-old. Got a nice little pop on that ball there. Yeah, absolutely. And Puerto Rico doing a good job of just staying step-by-step step along with Team USA here. So, ever we talked about in the Canada game earlier. Canada missed a bunch of serves in sets one and two, and, but it didn't bite them at all because they were playing well enough. Then when they got into set three, those service errors started to catch up a little bit. I'm not saying that same thing is happening here. Just keep an eye on those two numbers, the score and the number of service errors the United States makes. You know what? Averill wasn't as high on that ball right there, so I think he's feeling <laughs> those PB and J's right PB &Js. now. PB and J's. Go check out our Instagram for the the reel we posted earlier of Averill and the very adventurous match he had last night against Suriname. It was very fun. Oh, that's not a, a good one. pass by Lawrence. Great Rodriguez runs down. it down, but this will be a free ball. Averill, give it to him. Give it to him. Give it to him. Long it to Tia out of the back row. I was expecting the give and go as yeah, well. Me too. But uh, Garrett flying out of the pipe where, like we said yesterday, he's very good. He is very good out, out of the pipe. Must be the two leg sleeves. Or the, <laughs> actually, those are. he's probably just wearing tights at that point. Yeah, I, I wear tights every time I play indoor these days. I wish they made me jump higher, but they don't. Ooh, wow. actually a good contest there from Rodriguez. And Ellis not in the right position to take a real swing at that ball. Neither was Haynes, but I think he got away with it. That ball was touched by the block. Yes. That was very lucky there very by weird. Jake Haynes. But that joust of the net might have been the biggest mis mismatch 50-50 joust we've ever seen with Kevin Rodriguez going up against against Jake Haynes. That's like a foot and a half of Seven difference. feet against. I'll, I'll go ahead and give it 5-9. Like that is uh, David versus Goliath right there. What oh, a cover. Kept alive. Oh, oh, too bad. That is a really good coverage play. But TJ DeFalco, who is an outstanding wing blocker, by the way, gets his first of the tournament. Timeout Puerto Rico. Uh, United States on a 4 to nothing run. It is 9-5. And United States also leads two sets to none. People asking about info. Uh, the Norseka website is actually decently up to date for this event. So uh, Norseka.net, go give that a look. Uh, USA Volleyball on social media and on USAVolleyball.org is keeping updates mm -hmm. or our social media on Volleyball Source. Uh, lots of ways to follow this tournament. Yeah, no, the only reason there's seven is because Guatemala did pull out they at did. the last second. They are the Central American champions, and that's how they qualified into this tournament. You had the one qualification from Caribbean, that was Suriname, and the one from the Central America, that was Guatemala. Guatemala did had to have to pull out at the last minute, and that's why there's seven, and that's why it wasn't able to be adjusted at all. Right. Uh, it's actually the same format as the Women's North Seca Championship held in Quebec yep. City, Canada last week. Uh, also a seven-team event up there north of the border. What a diving pass that is. Wow, what a Beautiful swing. Beautiful dig by McIntosh off a great swing. Now Haynes to make him pay, sends over an off speed. Option ball to Hoyos, good scoop by Averill. DeFalco blocked and covered somehow. Good good spot there by Mike Christensen. That would have been four touches that he Yes, said it, it would have. And Taylor Averill and the three-man wall all over that big attack. And another monster block for the United States. Shoutouts to Rob Aspera, or in Arena MC. He's not. He's not as active in the chat today. Er, today as uh, as he was earlier. <laughs> that was a cool rally. Another uh, classic Tim McIntosh defensive play featured. Oh, okay. I like that look by Lawrence. Yeah. Because uh, like, there's no way he tags the sideline no. from there. He wanted like the edge of yeah. Haynes's bicep. He, he, he was looking for the touch there. Didn't get it. But that's a shot. Once again, if I'm Ozzy, do that again. Yep. Do that again. Pump yep. his tires. Pump his tires. Totally. Get him going. Go up and take confident rips. I like it. Ooh, okay. Float service reception here. A bit of an issue for oh. Lawrence potentially. And Ellis with a pretty sloppy attack there that time. <laughs> that's that's okay. It has to be Gage. Shout out PB and J's for that strong block. <laughs> 
Uh, one day I'd love to do, imagine how much fun uh, Volleyball Source and Out of System combination oh broadcast would be. Oh boy. That would, that would be, between between Gage and you, I don't know who would get it. Like, uh, no one else would be able to talk. <laughs> that would bring the house down. A serve there for Micah Christensen. All of a sudden, it's 13 to 5. Remember when it was 5 5? Yeah. This is an 8 to nothing United States run. Wild. Ooh. You jinxed him. You it's jinxed him. It's, it's okay. I think the U.S. can live with an 8 to 1 sequence. Yeah, you're probably right. Figueroa back to serve. It looks like we've got a setter change for Puerto Rico, number 8, Sebastian Hike. 20 years of age, 1 meter 85, is into set. And I think that's the only change that I've seen. Perfect pass by Shoji as usual. Oh. And that's the route by Averill. Even didn't get perfect contact on it, but he ran that along the net to create space. Just painting the sideline, too. We have a perfect view of that shot. Oh, and he, we were wondering. Here we go. Here's Here we go. Micah Ma'a, out of system to the moon indeed. Micah Ma'a set a brilliant game last night. Here he is in place of Micah Christensen to set the rest of the way for the United States. Ma'a, number 14 in dark blue out of UCLA. I thought he played fantastic last night. And, you know, we talked about the last time we saw him was against Brazil in the VNL, which didn't go well. He was impeccable. Like the lefty goes to try and send that one over and follows through into the net as doing so. Yeah, USA now with a nine-point lead. And I think it's safe to say that they may have wrapped up this set. I believe the United States will finish this match 3-0, to zero and they will keep pace with Cuba at the top of Group B. Oh. I know that serve is out of bounds, but... And I, it is, I'm, I know that it is coming through well on our broadcast because this is 1440p, 60 FPS from the baseline, the way the volleyball should be shot. But even still, being here in person, you get even more of an appreciation mm -hmm. for how fast that serve is. That float serve by Sebastian Hike might have been the worst serve I've seen all weekend. What do you mean? We saw one go underneath the net earlier. But that was, at least he was trying to be aggressive. That was a float serve into the bottom tape. I don't know. I think That's I still think uh, the other one for from Suriname earlier was, yeah, that was, was worse than that. That was bad. Oh, nice hybrid. Lawrence is through the block, I think. I think yeah. Haynes was yeah. just barely too late to close there. And Lawrence, much more effective tonight. Much more present. Yeah, what are his numbers the looking like right about match. now? Let's, let's pull up his numbers here. Um, he's got four. I don't know about that. I really feel like he's been more impactful There's, than just he's, four. He definitely, there was definitely one in the first set that one ripped down the had, had cross body down the line uh -huh. that was not marked on the score sheet. Uh, I test, though. I, I am impressed with what we've I seen test, from number two in white. Absolutely. You're not wrong. First legitimate setting chance for Micah Ma'a, at least tonight, and it's a good one. Quick ball to Jake Haynes on the right side. And we were marveling last night, Everett, when even though Haynes, a legit seven-footer and a big arm, can hit a surprisingly fast ball. It's yes. not like he's a guy that's going to wait and try and go over people. He actually does want to beat people with speed. Haynes hasn't gotten into serving rhythm, though, tonight. He has not. We've got some love right now for the... Uh, some people just realized that the Dominican Republic beat Cuba, or sorry, beat the USA in the finals of the women's oh, event of, on the they, weekend. They certainly did. I, I had a, a quite the rant about it on our show yesterday morning because I was not pleased that the United States women failed to win that tournament. I, I know you weren't pleased, but I still think we have to give the majority of the credit. I think it, I think it was more of a plus Dominican Republic as opposed to a minus USA performance. Fair enough. I mean, you were at the game. You said the Dominican looked great, and from all accounts, it seems like they're a pretty darn good team. They are. They look better now than they did at VNL, hands down. Good to hear. Good for the Norseca region. Wow. Oh, there we go. Wow. Clistan Lawrence. Wow. Yeah. I mean, that's an international big ball right it's there. It's an international, like, once this is why we're saying he needs to figure out these reps and figure it out on the left side because he is an international level talent. Agreed. He has the touch, he has the vision, he has the physicality, he has the skill. Can he just figure it out on the left side? 
Nice serve there from Ellis down the line. One big ball deserves another. Manga Tutia, though, is dug off the tape. Now a new face, Axel Melendez. Number 12 and White misses that one out of bounds. And also, Rob, like, we grew up in an era where Puerto Rico was relevant. Sure. Like, one of the first big events that was uh, available with highlights and, and cut-up stuff on YouTube was that 2006 World Championships, and Hector Soto brought oh. Puerto Rico to the moon, and that's back when they were in World League. They were at the World Championships. They were competing with the best teams in the world, and you know that that country has the talent to get back to that again as there Look we go. That. There's oh. the lefty setter, Sebastian Hike. That's what he was trying to do a point or two ago. Uh, Everett's camera just got bonked, so he's going to go down and fix that. But that was a sweet play. Love it when a setter gets a chance to turn and burn like that, especially a lefty. I would like to see left-handed setters honestly do that more. Make yourself a threat. Here is Melendez. First look at the service line is not a very good one. And the United States now five points away. Another pretty good pass by Kliston Lawrence. Conservative shot picked up easily by DeFalco. Haynes, sharp cross court right on the sideline. That is very good block defense, the transition offense for the United States who lead by 10. And I think it is pretty much fair to call it at this point. This match is over. Uh, Nick in the chat. Yeah, I actually noticed that yesterday. We were looking up Kevin Rodriguez of Puerto Rico and noticed that he's set for Savo Volley in Finland. Shout out to Mike Mikolau, Chicago guy who plays over there. Nice block touch there in the middle. Basically a free ball look here. DeFalco again, high hard heat. Everett, how's your camera doing? It's it's still alive. It just hit the one of the legs, so you had to reposition things a little bit. But you know we're good to go. We're we're not far from it. Excellent news. Uh, the all that you missed is that this match is over. <laughs> it is 22 to 11. Uh, I think the United States will get this one done no problem. They look very good in doing so. We're gonna chat with a couple people after the game. Stick around for that. I think we'll try and get. Oh yeah, that ball's into the antenna by Lawrence. We're going to get both Micah Christensen and then Coach John Sparrow. Ooh, we're going uh, for both. I've talked to both of those guys. We'll get Micah first and then Coach. So okay. We'll go and track them down as soon as this match is over. 23 to 11. Shout-outs to uh, cameraman Cody Kessel down there behind Micah Ma'a. Good dig by Ma'a. McIntosh will get underneath it. Haynes sends it over. Melendez out of the oh, back row. Yes. Scoop by McIntosh. Can this be brought back? Yes. Good chase by Wong Tutia. Lawrence cross court out of bounds. What a defensive hustle play by the United States to bring up match point. You know, you keep on bringing up Cody Kessel down there, and it's very reminiscent of the first time I ever saw his father, John Kessel, who's a legend in legend. the American coaching volleyball coaching sphere. He was lying down during the sitting matches at the 2015 Pan Am Cup. Micah, like Pan Am Games. Micah Ma'a serving for the match. He won last night's match with a kill. Uh, he will not yet win tonight's match with a serve. That would have been fun. Would have been fun. If, my, if Ma'a was able to finish, close out both matches, that would have been awesome. Love it when setters score. And representing Puerto Rico's last chance in this match is Condor Figueroa, 17-year-old middle blocker. Where do you think Ma'a goes with this side out to win the match? Jake Haynes. Oh! P Mr. PB&J wow. himself. Taylor Avril. That ball was punched on the back one run, and Taylor Avril and the United States win the match in style. Three sets to none over Puerto Rico. 25-14, 25-18, 25-12. And now what we know, Everett, is that the United States versus Cuba tomorrow night will decide Group B. That match will be spicy. <sighs> spicy, 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 spicy. I'm finally I'm finally excited for the dong days of North Seca to be over and to get a little seasoning on these matches. Couldn't have said it better. Six matches so far, six, three, zeros. The United States improved to 2-0. Oh. And definitely Puerto stay. Rico uh, falls to 0-2. They will take on Suriname tomorrow. 
And we'll that one should be. I'm, in, I'm also excited for that match. Me matchup. too. That should be fun. Uh, both those teams with a win would book a spot in the quarterfinals. And it looks like you know what? Looking around, we may have a few hundred fans here tonight. So it's in, there's yeah, an improvement. Yeah, there's is, an improvement. This is a lot better. This is a, a lot, lot better. better. Ooh, that's a nice jersey walking towards us. Ooh, what is that? Yeah, what is that? That uh, yeah, that black jersey there. Yeah. It looks South American more so than oh, I think it's soccer because it's Umbro. Yeah, yeah, that's a soccer jersey. So uh, the United States getting a little bit of home country love, which they certainly deserve. I'm happy they're getting a bit of a crowd to play in front of here and a great crowd watching at home on Volleyball Source. <laughs> so we are going to go grab Stay Micah. Stay tuned. Do you want to go grab him? I will. I will yeah. go grab Micah Christensen, and then uh, I'll oh. remind John Spira that he agreed to come over and chat with us. I will be right back. Everett, please hold it down. Mm -hmm. I will as I drink my pink Starbucks drink. It's quite delicious. I'm not, that's, that's all. That's the only free ad we're going to give them. Don't worry, Rob. Um, great. We talk so badly of the other teams. I think we talk very well of the other teams. Um, but we're not going to sit here and lie to you to say that the teams who are losing are playing well. No, we've been, we've been pumping up Puerto Rico, and every time they made a nice play, we definitely talked about it. As... We've got some, oh, it looks like they're repping Maui right now. Uh, of course, with the Maui fires, and you're going to see a few of them. Ma'a, Shoji, Magututia, Christensen, of course, all the Hawaii boys out there helping raise money for the Maui, the Maui fires. So let's, let's, maybe, let's maybe talk to Micah Christensen about that as he comes over here and, and ask him about everything. I don't think, I think right now Rob is, where is he? Yeah, it looks like he's got Christensen. And he's going to wear, wear wear the shirt too. Perfect, perfect, perfect. No free ads. Yeah, absolutely. Out of system, you know. You know. You know. Actually, we should we should talk. Let us, link us up with uh, all volleyball. We want to, we want to, we want to hop on that train too. And let's, let's see, can Rob get Coach Spra? He's over there by the bench and as, as he brings over Christensen. So just seeing Haynes and Aaron Russell have a bit of a chat. Oh, there we go. Yeah, it's not bad, eh? The stream and everything, too, I've been watching it. It's really good. That's what we want to hear, Mr. Micah Christensen. Can we get camera four, please, Michael? Oh, you guys are live, my bad. Oh, we are. Oh, we're yeah, we're, we're, we're still and just... This, this is the best part, is that we get to just keep the stream going and talk to the people. What's up, everyone? This is Micah Christensen. You already know that. Uh, after the United States just beat Puerto Rico 3-0. to zero. Micah, mission accomplished. Six sets up, six sets down. What did your team accomplish other than just the result tonight? Uh, I think obviously the, the result was the first priority, which we did a good job of. But I think we got grooved in to the tournament. You know, the guys that didn't play last night, uh, be able to get used to the rest blowing the whistle, the fans in the, in the stands. And, and playing uh, high level volleyball with connections uh, on our side of the net that we can work on. And so I think we accomplished that tonight. I think so too. Uh, how many how many kills was it before a dug ball? I think it, we were looking at the stats and the ball that Maddie tipped, which I thought was down, it was. was, the, yeah, it was. <laughs> it was. That no, was, it wasn't. Don't don't find me. Statistically, that was the first quote unquote dug ball. I think you guys were eleven for eleven. Oh no, it was point. at least twelve for twelve. Was it 12 I thought 12? I thought it was more in the fifteen for fourteen range. I thought that's where that's where it was. Oh, it looks like oh, you didn't I'll go, sign. I'll go, I'll go sign after. You okay. oh, I always forget. They're used to it. They're used to it. <laughs> Officials are calling Micah for his captain's duties of signing the score sheet. So the offense with the guys, with Ron, with TJ, with Maddie, with uh, Taylor and Dave, or no, well, I guess Max and Dave, that looked insane. You guys were grooving. That must have felt like you were having fun. It looked fun to us. Yeah, it's always fun. I mean, gosh, we get to play volleyball. Isn't volleyball cool? Fun. How about it's that? It's fun. Um, but, yeah, we, we've had a long training block. We've worked on a lot of things. We've worked really hard. Uh, and I'm glad we can show that a little bit here. Um, I think we have more to show in terms of cleanliness of our game, in terms of physicality, and I, uh, we plan to do that 
uh, coming up to end this week. Good news. Everett, what do we got from I mean, the numbers? You're talking cleanliness of game. It's not <laughs> as efficient as last night, but you still went 44 for 64 with only two errors. That's and like one of, one of those 60. Block. And I don't like it. Yeah, I, don't, I don't like it. <laughs> he like says. 65%. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> crazy. That's a very high level. Now, early on, well, especially like throughout the match, we saw you guys run the middle quite a bit. Was that one of the goals here, or is it any time when you guys are passing that well, you want to utilize the middle of the court in that way? I mean, we have s four of the more dynamic middles in the world. In the like world, yeah. four of them, not just two of them. Four. And so, the fact that we have the, that option always is all. You know, I like our I like our odds using those guys, and just credit to the passers for giving those opportunities. We've been working on stretching that mm -hmm. zone to where we can really run it from a lot of different places and i think the middles have been doing a great job of getting available for that um but but yeah i mean why not use them if, if, we, if we got them you know i have a technical question about middle attack I, right. I hope that people appreciate this uh so something that i that we're noticing a lot nowadays is that i love is middles running these super sophisticated routes where they'll jump sideways or they'll run along the net and they'll like try to create space against blockers with the directions that they're jumping side to side, which is pretty wild. How many different balls do you have to set? Like, do you Ooh, just true. do you just call like where the ball is going to be, and they choose the route that they're going to run, or how does that work? No, it's all it's all pre-called. Okay. Um, and so each ball is different based on the route that's pre-called. So even and like each the player's ball is different oh, <laughs> than than that, and that's just uh, it's just reps. It's time with the guys. It's. It's after practice. If something's feeling a little weird, we gotta we gotta groove it out. And so, credit to us uh, in terms of our, our our staff and our middle blockers for for working on that stuff. But you know, we've got it. We we have a lot in the playbook. Do we use all of them all the time? No. Um, I think simplicity is really important in a lot of those things. And sometimes we've gotten a little too far away from that. And now we're coming back to more uh, of a simplistic approach to it but we've got it all in the bag and it just depends on which one we want to pull out like who would have thought that that's where volleyball would have like the, the evolution of going to come from like when you started with the national team a decade ago we weren't running these types of routes and these types of drifts and these these types of fallaways with with the middles as much or were you was that something that was in, involved in the game back then as, as much as it is now no not at all it was front one back one gap uh when i first started with the national team um, and then a lot going of Dave Lee off two feet Dave behind Lee, the center. Man. Dave <laughs> Lee was, yeah, back ones, front ones, really fast. And Max just being super physical, way up there, front one gaps. And there's there's offenses for that too. Like I'm running that kind of offense overseas. Good point. And mm -hmm. so there's, there's so many different ways and offenses that you can um, run based on what the middle route is. And there's always advantageous ways to do it. I think it's a lot on personnel. I think it's based on personnel as well. You have to mm -hmm. know your strengths of your For middle sure. blockers. Like Max, Max is still up there. He's still flying. Jeff Jendrick. Dude. You can't touch the guy. <laughs> and so when he's up there, you just got to let him eat. Even if you commit on him like this, you still might not you touch You just got to let guy. him eat. And Averill's so shifty. He's moving the ball around. He's coming out of nowhere. He's, um, he's faking all around. And he's got that in his game. And he, he's by almost by necessity perfected that stuff and so we have a lot of different diverse options in our middle blocker attack that it's it's fun for me as a setter i bet i bet especially with that group of middles like oh. you said it yourself yeah yeah they they they're there to eat and you Those feed them, you feed them well we we, un we understood that they're taylor hungry. uh had some pb and j's this, the, earlier today he, he told ever that he was being weighed down by too much peter but oh jelly. man that post that you guys put on instagram was absolutely hilarious oh taylor. the the from the clips from last night oh yeah because <laughs> we were just we could not stop laughing at taylor's double Oh, oh, my God, that was, that was, that was hysterical. Oh, yeah, because he puts himself out there for that. And he does. And, and he, he does a great job of it. And, and he's usually he's a, he's a great ball control middle. But when it does happen, <laughs> you got to take it's, it. It's even better in that scenario. Oh, you yeah. know, like yeah. a guy who's got questionable hands, if he, if, if he gets the double, it's just like, hey, you know what, next yeah, ball. Like, oh, okay, sorry, but buddy. when it's Taylor Avril who preaches about how middle should be able to set, <laughs> you got to go in on oh, it. Oh, dude. And, yeah. then, and then he's taking setting reps before practice. Yeah. He's, yeah. Setting <laughs> he's hitting targets. big balls and hitting lines. Yeah, no, <laughs> like, you love it. You love it. I but love he, Taylor but so But he much. can take it as well, which is great. You know, like, he, he's able to take it, which is wonderful. Taylor is very, very good for the game. Looking forward to tomorrow, Micah, you guys have Cuba. And now that that's a VNL team. That's a team that 
we've known at times to be one of the best teams in the world. They produce some of the best players in the world. Are you excited to be able to take on a team like Cuba here? Yeah, of course, of course. Um, to be able to play those caliber of players, the, the athletes that they are, the experience, the, the, the championship experience that they have um, is, is always a great test and they're always dangerous. So we gotta be, we gotta be ready tomorrow and we will be. And you know that they get up for big games. They do. No you doubt. Know, and sometimes. The, no doubt. sometimes. <laughs> but when Cube is there to play, they, they can be amongst the best in the world. No doubt. No is, doubt. Is there any game plan? Like, is there anything that you guys are preparing specifically for Cuba for tomorrow? Is that something that's going to be addressed in video a bit later? Uh, we haven't prepared for them yet. Um, we're, we're respecting our guys and and uh, against Puerto Rico, but um, we've played them in this last VNL, so we're familiar with them. We watched them um, play these fat last few matches, and so we have a a pretty good plan, I I think. But it's an ever changing game. If you see them get hot, they can do anything and everything, and so. The last, oh man! Last but not least, Micah. Before oh, you go guys, do your captain's can duties, can you tell us can about wait. your sweatshirt? Yeah, yeah, definitely. That was my next question. Yeah, as so well. this is um, what myself and a few of the other guys associated with Hawaii are. Uh, we warmed up in today, and we're wearing now. Um, it means malama, which is uh, to care for, to take care of kakoo, which means to support kokua, um, to help, and it's all about Maui. And um, obviously, we're pretty aware of mm -hmm. the tragedy that happened there. Um, this is our first time, you know, really being in front of people in public um, in order to try to bring awareness to it. Um, and it, it kind of, it's kind of makes sense for us because when it all happened, it was uh, front page news and all kinds of stuff like that. And it's got a lot of attention. Now it's kind of died down and that's kind of how it and works. But there's people still but suffering. There is, there's a whole lot of work. The work's just starting. And so... Um, a lot of our love and aloha going to those guys um, and just trying to bring awareness and support um, to those people in Maui that that are still just trying to rebuild. Can you can you give us the link for that so we can plug it uh, during the stream and stuff tomorrow and we can put it in the chat for people to yeah, see? Yeah, there's a handful of, yeah, yep, there's what a handful a, of great, great causes we, that are whatever going. Whatever we can share. Appreciate it, you yeah. guys. Thank you very much. Of course. Well, Micah, always a pleasure, man. You guys, pleasure Always love mine. chatting with you. Great match That's tonight, fun. and best of luck, uh, best of luck against Cuba tomorrow. We're excited for that one. We yeah. are. We're excited As for that we. one. Go yeah. do your captain's duties. We're actually going to get your head coach. I think we make them wait a little longer. No, oh, <laughs> even better. <laughs> they're staring at their death, staring at us right now. Thanks, buddy. Great match. Yeah, they they keep waving over. Thanks, Micah. <laughs> All right, coach, come on in. All right. From from uh, from one USC Trojan to a UCLA Bruin. Well, even, even coaches on the protein drink after yeah. the re rehydrating with the electrolytes what, there. What is that? Okay. It's a good protein drink is what that is. <laughs> Our strength coach, Timmy Pillow, always makes me one up with the guys. I hope that it tastes better than it looks. Yes, it does. Okay, good news. Uh, yeah. So this is Coach John Spira, which most of you probably already know. Coach, congratulations. Six sets up, six sets down. Um, your thoughts on your team's progression through two matches as you prepare for a VNL opponent in Cuba tomorrow? Uh, I think our progression really is just getting used to the gym, getting back in a competitive mode after having a month of training and a couple weeks off. Um, in terms of how we've been challenged so far, I don't know that we've been tested so far other than to just make sure that we're in a good competitive mindset. And I think we have. I think we haven't really let down. We've been pretty sharp passed the ball really well tonight. So uh, I feel like we've gotten what we needed to out of the first couple of matches. Only four errors from your team so far. Is that one of those indications for you that you guys are sharp and that you're going through and, and, and staying present in the process one point at a time? Attack yeah. errors through two yeah. matches. Yeah, yeah that's, that's what I'm Yeah, no, appreciate that. Um, yeah, I, I agreed. And I think the energy on the court too mm -hmm. and, and how we're – we spent a lot of time trying to just tighten up our defensive systems in particular, how we're coordinating front court, back court, how we're tactically executing. It's really easy as a coach to say, hey, go do this, mm -hmm. and then to have that happen. You have to train execution. So that was really a big area of focus for us, and we're seeing that now. And, of course, the teams have been out of system a lot and making it a little bit easier on us. We'll be tested a little bit more moving forward. Yeah, definitely tomorrow against Cuba is, is one right. that we've set, set, circled on our calendar. Yeah, as, as I think a lot a of people one. have in terms of this <laughs> tournament and just the, the quality teams in North Seca. I mean, you're really talking about Cuba and Canada right now and, and, and 
being able to really test anybody in the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when when we ask players, we've asked a lot of the players already in this tournament, especially like Canada, Cuba, and Mexico, who will play Olympic qualifiers in a couple weeks. The players have been doing their media discipline research and have been saying that they are focusing on one match at a time here at Norseka's. Yes. However, you from a coaching perspective, you have to have seven matches in nine days yeah. in the back of your head coming up in a couple weeks. It's not in the back. Okay. That, that, thank you for being <laughs> honest about that. Yeah. So how do – can you, and if so, how, do you use a tournament like this where, you'll, where you will play five, hopefully – matches in six days mm -hmm. to prepare for a tournament like that coming up it's an opportunity to see how guys are feeling when they have to do that when they have that level of volume uh, how, how does performance ebb and flow how do you use your bench under those conditions we're really in an advantageous position particularly in the middle blocker spot my we're goodness <laughs> you sure are we really we can about that pretty much flip you, back you and have, forth you have four starters yes that's correct <laughs> and i i really feel that with thomas jeschke's improved level of play over the it, not just this summer but over the course of the last couple years and there he is as he's walking by on cue but i i feel like he's really helped us tremendously in terms of being able to have another starter outside too and, and Garrett Mwangi Tatia has, has played the off-the-bench role for us so well over the last number of years that I feel like we've got a nice set of four outsides as well. So that, that does give us some good optimism going to the Olympic qualifiers. Certainly some optimism if we need to make moves here, we can do it. Um, but, yeah, that's definitely something I'm thinking about quite a bit. How much of your job at this point is just managing? Because we, we talked to you before VNL in Ottawa, and you're like, you know, I've been coaching Matt Anderson for 10 years, for a decade. Same yeah. thing with, with, you know, most of these guys have been in this program for so long. You're one of the oldest teams in the world. You're not, not, you're not that, that old. Yeah. But, uh, I thought you were about to say I'm one of the oldest coaches in the world. No, 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 I think there's quite a bit that I feel has changed over the years. Mm -hmm. If you're talking about the decade, really the development of someone like Micah Christensen, really who came in from SC, as you were talking about, as a sophomore in college, and I've been with him the whole time. Mm -hmm. And now he's playing at the highest level uh, in the world and has so much experience. I coach him very differently than I did 10 years ago. Oh, absolutely. And how much latitude do you give them? How, I mean, you could go down to how you train every day on a daily basis, what those practices look like, what does a leadership model look like, how has that changed, how does my communication, how has that changed. It, it's intentionally being much more collaborative, giving them a voice, still needing to make the, the, the decisions, having conversations about what that's like and what that means. I, I just There's a, a lot of adaptation that's needed to occur over the course of the last and even this summer i really feel like this summer i have really i felt it quite strongly more th this summer than in the past about me needing to adapt and change mm. because I, I feel like if i don't then you're gonna have problems mm -hmm. you, you now have a veteran team so how do i need to do things differently and that really goes down to e even in practice plan design over the last month i mean i'm i really like to train i feel like I'm, it's one of the things that as a head coach you you give up some things and then you continue to do some things that are you and a lot of coaches when they get to the head coaching level and they've been doing this for a long time and the administrative load increases and there's just more responsibilities in general the practice plan design really becomes the role of an assistant coach that happens in quite a number of programs that's not in no this way. program so for me even this last train block I was like okay I'm getting a gut feel that how we are training this group has changed even yet again. Because I during talked about the that. During the summer. During, oh, yeah, during wow. the last couple of weeks. Just because, again, it's a veteran group, and I have some opinions about how you need to train and lift and what the priorities are with a veteran group. But even even more, okay, okay, we need to continue to 
to grow here in terms of how we work with this group. Wow. It's, it's funny that you talk about that progression over the t past 10 years because we were just talking with Micah about the evolution of the setting and especially of the middle mm -hmm. routes that, that you guys are running now. Yes. And how before it was just like, you know, the front, back, and the gap that you were running with the right. middle. And now each individual middle has different routes that they're running for different situations with different footworks and different different drift patterns. Yes. You've added so many layers, in the, especially in that one particular issue over the mm -hmm. past decade. Uh, absolutely. I think if you look over the last 20, maybe even plus years, the biggest offensive adaptation is really just the, the inclusion of the BIC at, mm -hmm. at such a high level. And then I think if you look at the last five years, maybe a little bit more too, um, is really all of a sudden you have these drift patterns. And what does that mean? And they're very, very technical. And so we spent a lot of time uh, over the last quad implementing those systems. And those work for some and not for others, and they are really complex in terms of how you teach them. And not only how you teach it, but how that gets integrated with the larger offensive system. And so I think what Mike is doing is trying to figure out what's the strength and weaknesses of each individual player, uh, and then how do you use that within the system? And that's, uh, you know, very few people can do that, but Micah can. Uh, that's that's some best setter in the world stuff. Right, it, that's right. It really is. So this, there's a guy I want to ask you about that we talked to last night, and that's Tim McIntosh. Yes. I want to hear, because so I've known Tim a couple years now. I saw him, like, he kind of used the VLA as a jumping off point mm. towards your gym, really, when he was playing for the Northeast Force. I, I had never heard of the kid, as I don't think a lot of people had. Right. I saw him play once, and I was blown away. Mm -hmm. And he worked his way into your gym. He worked his way onto a senior A roster. Tell me your story and your relationship with Tim McIntosh last year or two? It's been longer than a year or two because it started with emails. Coach, can I get a shot? Can I get a shot? And some communication and some he's, he was working it. And so we gave him an opportunity to come in the gym and get a look at him. And obviously what you see is his athleticism. Oh, yeah. Just his speed and ability to cover ground and get to the corners and, and make a move forward, which is hard. And, and so he has strength and speed. And we don't talk about speed I don't think nearly enough in this sport. So he's got it. And so um, then he had some opportunities. you got to get a little lucky, too, when you're a libero sure getting do. a job overseas and having an opportunity to grow and develop. And he got that, and now he's here making the most of it. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's been it's been a blast getting to watch him play. And I think yeah. it's a testament that even in this match, you're using Shoji in service, even him in defense. Right. Because he made some fantastic plays last night. He was all over the floor. That's right. And tonight he didn't get as many opportunities, particularly in that second set. We had a lot of service errors. Yep. And every time he ran off, I was like, darn, the, the service error now. <laughs> Now it's like Timmy doesn't get a shot to get a dig, you know, so it's uh, it was something that we haven't done very much of flipping. Yeah, I, I don't know if I've ever seen a United States team mm -hmm. really do that, yeah. but, it, but it can work, especially if when, it, like like you, you and I were talking about before the match, there is a pitch count sort of aspect to this tournament that even, that even apl might apply to liberos, I don't know. Well, we talked about that. That's yeah. exactly right. And so, but I think there's also... You're, you're really trying to just squeeze every little point out of this tournament and certainly the next. And as I'm strategizing mentally about, like, okay, how am I going to do that? In that moment, you get to the end of that tournament, one point really does matter in that round robin. Mm -hmm. And can you just get a little bit better? Um, and so that's something that I, I, I needed to see. Yep. So I really wanted to bring Tim this week. I really wanted to to do the flip just so I can see it and get a – Really, I, I mentioned gut feel. I get a gut feel for that too, and I felt good about it tonight. I don't, you know, I know it's different for Eric too. So it is, but, yeah, good point. But you got to be, and, I, and Eric is. It's all about the team mm -hmm. and just how we're really like bringing everybody's strength to bear for the good of the team. I think the last question I have is about. It's it's a decently big question. Something that he, Everett and I talk about a lot on on our show and just about kind of volleyball in general the difference and the balance between coaches and teams and everybody focusing on process versus focusing on results mm -hmm. and where are your processes where are they becoming results how do you control as best you can how do you you know can enforce those processes becoming results and i, I something that i was saying as we were talking about the united states women uh dropping the norseka final over the weekend is that i said that winning is a skill and I think that winning is a skill that needs practice. Is that something that you agree with at all? And like, d does is there? Do you think there's value in simply 
winning a tournament such as this or is it all the the process steps that takes you to winning a tournament that's really the value oh i think both you you just said is there value in winning and i think there is um when we won the world cup in 2015 one of my good friends is eric sullivan at texas we were we go way back roommates in the dorms back at ucla he called me and he said i he always felt like you needed to be on the podium during the quad, so you felt like you could get on the podium mm. at the end of the Olympics. and I, I, So I think I've, I've always remembered that. And I, so I think there is value in winning. And what winning does is validate that process. And to your initial question, which was, is winning a skill? And I think it is. And I, I feel quite strongly that it is something that you can teach. And it is a process. It is a mental process. It is a thought process. It is a whole line of training that goes into what we call performance psychology or Mm -hmm. the mental side of the game. There's lots of different ways you talk about it, but I think that there is a number of aspects of that skill set that can be worked on with every individual player. And I think for me, philosophically over the years, that's been um, something of, of real emphasis. I started thinking even back in 2006 and 2007, uh, okay, there you have the most talented teams in the world, and their physicality usually gets them into that top five in the world these days, the top ten. I mean, there's so many good football right. teams. But then what pushes them to that next What makes level? the difference yep, at the end? Exactly. Uh, and it, 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 certainly there's some physical aspects of it. You know, in our game, somebody can go back and rip a few serves, and that can be the difference. Um, but there is the, the thing that you can control, as we're talking about process and the mental side of the game and the vernacular around that. The, there is that aspect of you can control your response to those situations, what you say to yourself, how you handle those moments. Um, and, and there's, like I said, there's a lot of different things that we talk about as a team and emphasize, particularly down the stretch. So where, like for, for you guys specifically, you just lost the VNL finals. And mm-hmm. how do you look at that loss? And, you know, where on the meter does it that stand? To, like, was that something that lacked in our process? Or was that just a one-game scenario where we lost to a team that was slightly better than us on, on, on that day? Right. Is that something where, you know, in my personal thought, it's, it's, the, it's the latter. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's Poland was, it was Poland that day. In and, Poland. And in Poland, and it's and that's a tough situation. And you know what? Maybe five out of ten times it goes the other way for you guys. Yeah. Or was there certain things that you guys looked at your process and you're like, maybe this isn't working? Well, I, th- I, I think um, I view it as such a learning opportunity. I, I, I was pretty disappointed that we didn't play better. We've, we've been now in the VNL finals a couple times, our third mm-hmm. silver, and so I was pretty ready <laughs> to, <laughs> I was, to win that thing. Uh, and I was excited about the opportunity, about having the chance to beat Poland in Poland. I mean, how? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's, that's the pinnacle right there. Rare. Yeah, I was ready. Yeah. Um, I think as we looked at it, really, there were other things other than maybe the mental side of the game that we looked at. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think the mental side of the game was something that really jumped out at us. It was about some execution, how some you – Some some Yeah, there, there, there really, you know – Subs here and there. I, I think there was some execu- uh, j- execution jumped out more to me than looking at it and saying, hey, we weren't ready or we didn't handle the pressure very well. I don't. Uh, that didn't jump out to me. And even when it does, sometimes it can be collective, but also sometimes it can be an individual here or there that needs a little touch-up on some of those processes. Um, and so, uh, yeah, and, and certainly that is an ongoing conversation with all of our athletes. It's just, it never stops day-to-day even after 10 years, eh, Coach? <laughs> no. No, in some respects, too, I think as we get to talking about the mental side of the game, the pressures and how you handle this moment don't get easier as they get older. No, that's a great point. It's, and, and it really is the, the pressures mount, the scrutiny mounts, um, the money mounts, the, the limited time, and the just you have a little more ta- thought of mortality here. Like you, you only have so much time here. So uh, sometimes the depth increases. Like if you look at guys like Taylor Averill, uh, Thomas Jeschke, which we mentioned earlier, these guys continue to get better and better. This man here who just refuses to age and seems to I get know. better at 38 David years Smith. old. David Smith, I know. So you have, you, you have more and more talent that's developing, and how do they come back and integrate to the team? There's, there is new challenges every year, even though, and those challenges change, even though you've been working with guys for such a long time. 
Awesome. Well, Coach, really appreciate you coming to chat with us. Congratulations on a fantastic win tonight. And yeah, uh, thank you. Excited about, about tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah. We are, too. Yeah, we yeah. are, too. Appreciate everyone being there. And uh, hi to my family at home. And we will see everybody tomorrow. Yeah, Thanks, 730 Coach. Eastern okay. time. Thanks. Awesome. Appreciate it. Appreciate you, Coach. Okay. Thanks a lot. There we are. And as Coach leaves us, that's pretty much going to do it. Anything for you, Rob? Anything we, we want to touch on there? As, well, that, was, that was a lot of information. Great. It was so great. Thanks, Coach. We'll see you tomorrow. Two great conversations with two of the great volleyball minds in the world. And I don't think anyone would doubt that nope. right now. But uh, love to hear from him and just talking about that process. But overall, two very good wins there by the United States. And they will look to go 3-0 and tomorrow against Cuba in a much tougher match. The cream is rising to the top in this tournament. I think that Canada has been really good so far. Canada has been, uh, it's been solid. I was talking to Coach before this match just now, and he agreed Canada has looked really good. Uh, Cuba has looked pretty good in the beginning of a new era, and the United States has looked very good. So tomorrow will be our first legitimate, like, internationally significant match, I think, between mm -hmm. the United States and Cuba, and I'm very excited to have that here on this channel. And that will really set the tone for the weekend. I'm looking forward to it. Absolutely. Well, that will do it for us, guys, from day two here at the 2023 Men's Norseca Continental Championship here in Charleston, West Virginia. My name is Everett DeLorme, joined, as always, by Mr. Rob St. Clair, and we are out. We will see you tomorrow once again at 1 p.m. Eastern yeah. time for the pregame pre show. The, the pregame the pre show, and then we'll go get live at um, 3 p.m. with what's the first game tomorrow, Rob? Ooh, great question. It might be Puerto Rico Suriname. I think it is. You're right. Puerto Rico Suriname um, at 3 p.m. And then you've got uh, Dominican Republic against the, uh, against Mexico before United States versus Cuba at 7.30. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you tomorrow right here on Volleyball Source. Peace.